Kim, in our Trust Your Science inbox, do we have any good myths we can take a peek at? We do. We actually have a really good question today from a method developer. Mm. And what they are asking is that, you know, when they're reading literature, they see that most methods are built using acidic pH yep. in the mobile phase. And they've heard some things about basic pH, but they really want to know, you know, is there a real benefit to that? You know, why not just use acidic pH? Yeah, boy, that's a really great question. Um, and I know one that we've talked about a little bit earlier is that pH obviously is one of the most important things you can do to manipulate selectivity. Mm -hmm. um, this is something we definitely can, can take a look at. Yep. And I think we can really show some great data on how pH is one of the most powerful tools. Excellent. So Kim, when we think about pH, it's all about manipulating the ionization state between acidic and basic compounds. Here's a classic kind of pH map or retention map. So as you can see in red, you have acidic uh, compounds and at low pH, those acidic compounds become unionized or more hydrophobic. So in reverse phase chromatography, they become more retained. Conversely, the blue line illustrates the basic compounds. And at low pH, those basic compounds become ionized or more hydrophilic and in reverse phase, less retained. But as you can see, as you increase pH going from two, say up to 10, those basic compounds now become unionized, more hydrophobic and more retained. So boy, you can really move around acids and bases just by changing the ionization state. Well, Jonathan, that's really an interesting retention map, but you know what customers always say to us. I live in the real world. I don't have just an acid or just a base or just a neutral. Yep. They want to see what this looks like with real samples. Jeez, that's actually a great, great point, Kim. What I'll do then, because I think this is fantastic, is I'll make up a sample with some acid, basic, and neutral compounds. Okay. And then we'll do the separation at both high and low pH, and we'll be able to show how those peaks move around as we manipulate the pH and manipulate those ionization states of those analytes. Awesome. Let's do it. So Kim, here are the results from the chromatography we ran at both uh, low and high pH for that mixture of acidic, basic, and neutral compounds. Um, as you can see in the top chromatogram, when we ran the sample mix using 0.1% formic acid, the acidic compounds are fairly well retained and have pretty good peak shape. But you can see the basic analytes, peaks three and five, they have pretty poor peak shape, even though they are kind of well retained. Yeah, they have the, kind of that shark fin peak shape, and they're really going to interfere with the quantification of peaks four and six. Yeah, but what happens, though, is when we use the ammonium hydroxide or go to high pH, we see a complete elution order change between the acidic and the basic compounds. The acidic compounds become uh, ionized or more hydrophilic, and they come really into the void and close really up front, where the basic analytes now, they're becoming unionized or more hydrophobic, and they're getting uh, much better retention, and because they're unionized, um, they don't have that shark fin-like peak shape. Yep, and peaks two and seven, since they're neutral, they don't move no matter what the pH is, as exactly you'd expect. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, if you were developing a method, boy, adjusting the pH going from low to high, if possible, um, is a really powerful tool. So those are some really interesting results, Jonathan. But it's important to make sure that we point out, you have to make sure that you're using a column that can be used at basic pH if you're gonna run in that pH range. So here we've subjected a variety of columns to my favorite column kill test, where we put them in 10 millimolar ammonium bicarbonate at pH 10 and a half at 60 degrees C. And you can see from this graph that anything that's silica based doesn't last very long but you get really good stability and performance out of columns that are designed for that, such as the hybrid column. Yeah, Kim, always great to point that out. And we covered this in an earlier episode, I believe it was episode six. So if anyone wants to go back and do a refresher, they can look at that episode, but you're hundred percent right. If you're gonna deal with alkaline mobile phase or high pH, you gotta make sure you're using the chemistry that can handle that, those types of harsh conditions. And another thing, Kim, which I think is pretty cool is that our application scientists today are still using elevated pH to design and develop methods. Uh, here's a recent one that was done by Margaret Marziares and Paul Rainville, where they did a separation of some pharmaceutical ingredients in multi-component cold and flu medication. And you can see from the separation that I'm showing here that when they developed this method, they settled on a high pH uh, method, so high pH conditions. 
Yeah, I can see that chromatography looks much better. You have much better resolution between all of those compounds at high pH. So JT, we saw the data. Yep. How do you want to call this one? This is trusted. Uh, using high pH mobile phase for methods development, you should be doing this. Um, it's one of the most powerful tools that you can do in chromatography, again, to manipulate your selectivity. You're right, but as we saw with my favorite column kill test, got to make sure you're using a column that can withstand basic pH. Exactly right, because if you're using silica, you're going to dissolve that out. It's going right. to end up in your flow cell mm -hmm. or in your mass detector. That'll be a bad day. So you're right, you need to make sure you're using the right chemistry. Absolutely. So you want me to write this up? Why don't you go ahead? All right, thanks. All right. If you'd like your question to be answered on a future episode, please feel free to email us at trustyourscience at waters.com.